to apply for the next five minutes or so. Um, I would, however, like to uh, pick out a few points that have resonated with me. Uh, and the first of those, uh, as several speakers uh, reminded us, we shouldn't be shy about where we are in the UK on well-being. Uh, we do often lead the way. Our data probably is, as Carlsberg might say, the best in the world. What we need to do is we need to exploit that, we need to build on that, uh, and we need to develop our lead for the benefit of UK society. Secondly, almost every speaker stressed the importance of taking an inclusive and a collaborative approach to defining research questions and developing the evidence base. We have to focus on what matters to our fellow citizens. We have to work together to generate answers and we have to engage all those who have the power to change things. Thirdly, we've heard that the evidence is incomplete and that much of what we have is of less than optimal quality. Now, I must say academics always say that, um, but even so, uh, we have to be careful too uh, not to look at that in a glass half empty way. There is enough there to make a start and even weak evidence gives us a pointer to where we should invest for the future. So, a stimulating and at times challenging day which has reminded me why, as a medic, I got interested in the subject in the first place. My career, which I think of as a series of lucky, mostly lucky, accidents, uh, has been spent mainly dealing with the interaction of work and health, latterly principally mental health. I had some success in putting together a structured programme that aimed to prevent intervene early and rehabilitate people in a workplace environment. And then came the recession of 2008, which severely tested our systems at BT, where I was at the time. Uh, and I came to realise that many of the factors that impacted on people's mental health were not what could be described as work-related, but they certainly affected work through the misery that they caused and even the ultimate endpoint which all of us would want to avoid, of suicide. And that was what led me to well-being. And there I discovered a world outside of my own medical cloister, evidence of which I hadn't been aware, scientific approaches that differed to mine, but which were just as valuable, and a rich literature of philosophical debate that goes back to antiquity about the meaning of life. We've heard a lot of that reflected today. That diversity of thought is a huge strength for us, but it does bring its challenges. We all have our views and our prejudices about how things should be done, but we have to set those aside if we're going to prosper. A house divided is easily conquered, and if we're to have the impact that I think all of us think this subject deserves, then we must be seen to speak, if not with one voice, then certainly with a common language. That will take people out of their comfort zones. So is it worth it? I think the answer has to be yes. On the most basic level, human curiosity demands that we investigate things we don't fully understand. But it's more important than that. We know enough to see that well-being is a key factor in the major issues of our time. From the rise of populism, through social cohesion to the challenge of our productivity gap in the UK. Well-being is central to the understanding of the drivers and of crafting the solutions to those issues. Perhaps more, most fundamentally though, uh, at a time when much of humanity appears to have lost its way, well-being gives us a focus for how society should operate. Democracy is an unpredictable beast um, and institutions in the United States are perhaps not currently showing themselves in their best light. But if we're to go back to the Founding Fathers, there remains a lot of truth in what they wrote almost 250 years ago. To remind you, part of what they said was that humanity, human beings, have the unalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
and it's the role of government to protect those rights. And that seems to me to be as good a definition of well-being as any, and a legitimate overarching role for the state. Richard described where we are as being at the start of a happiness revolution. A key enabler for that revolution is the establishment of well-being as a recognised academic discipline. We're privileged to be in the vanguard of that movement and I hope that we'll look back on today as a key milestone in its development. It won't be an easy journey, but the end is worthwhile, and I have no doubt that we'll have fun getting there. Thank you.